Hi, I'm Michelle. Welcome back to another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. Today we are here at the Franciscan Monastery of St. Clair on the northwest side of Cincinnati. They're located here on Miles Road, which is next to Witten Woods, on approximately 14 wooded acres. The property used to be the Franciscan High School Seminary property. Today, I'm here with Sister Vicki, and we're here in the main chapel of the monastery. How are you today? I'm doing good. How good. are you? Good. Thank you so much for having us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Welcome to our Oasis of Prayer. It's beautiful. So, can you tell me a little bit about um, what a Poor Claire sister would be? Oh. A Poor Claire sister is, mm -hmm. uh, first of all, a Roman Catholic religious nun and second of all, a Franciscan, so we're part of the Franciscan family. And uh, we follow St. Francis and St. Clair. St. Clair is our foundress. And um, so we follow a life of prayer and contemplation that St. Clair began in the year 1212. Oh, excellent. Can you also tell me um, what exactly does cloister mean? Uh, we're cloistered contemplative. Mm -hmm. uh, we take uh, three vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, which most religious orders do, and we have a fourth mm -hmm. vow of enclosure. And that fourth vow of enclosure means that all the sisters here, we live here 24-7. We, yeah. we, uh, we celebrate Mass here, we pray Liturgy of the Hours, and we do all of our work here w within the uh, monastery property. And what kind of community work do you do here at the monastery? Good question. We have quite a bit of community work that goes mm -hmm. on. I like to divide it between uh, our primary job or full-time job is contemplation and prayer. Mm -hmm. We pray for the needs of those who send their intentions into us. We pray for the needs of the church and the world. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is our full-time job. Yeah. Second of all, we have uh, kind of the business of running the monastery. We do, since we're here 24-7, we do all of everything in the monastery. Uh, and so we have uh, the running of the business of the monastery. As a 501c3, mm -hmm. you know, we still have to uh, do correspondence, prepare reports and things like that. And we communicate with, with um, uh, our benefactors and friends of the monastery. Third, we have community work which provides us with income. Mm -hmm. And we decided, the foundresses decided when they founded this monastery that we did not want to put all of our eggs in one basket with yeah. one type of community work. So we're very diversified. We have uh, uh, sisters who do spiritual direction and spiritual companioning. We have a guest area for retreatants who can have a directed or private retreat. Mm -hmm. We have a meeting room downstairs which can hold up to 35 people mm -hmm. and groups come and, and meet uh, there pretty regularly. Mm -hmm. Then um, we have uh, sewing and clerical work, mm -hmm. uh, some computer work, things like that that we do. Cards and crafts, we have a sister here who hand paints some of our cards. Mm -hmm. And so we're very diversified yeah. in that respect. Yeah. What we try to do, again, because we're contemplative and mm -hmm. we don't work outside the monastery, uh, thanks to the World Wide Web, yeah. we use um, the internet uh, with a website. We have a Facebook page. We have um, poorclairprayers at gmail.com is our prayer website or our prayer line okay. so people can can send in their prayer requests. Mm -hmm. And we have one sister who personally answers those requests and then she forwards them to all of us so we know what to pray for. Uh, and uh, then um, we also have some YouTube videos. Okay. And those YouTube videos are some of our uh, prof solemn professions, our jubilee mm -hmm. celebrations and things like that. So it's a slideshow that gives kind of the, uh, an overall picture, we hope, mm -hmm. of life here at the monastery and what we do. We were first founded by three mm -hmm. of our Poor Claire sisters who came from other monasteries and the three foundresses came in 1990 without a building. At first, Sister Doris uh, came and stayed at 
what was the old high school seminary, then was a retreat mm -hmm. center, and she stayed at what we call the White House for a while. Uh, and then uh, shortly before they moved into St. Vivian's Convent, where they were mm -hmm. for several years, um, she was up near the bell tower mm -hmm. of the Franciscan Seminary. Um, so she, she began here mm -hmm. on the same property yeah. in 1990. And when the other two sisters, uh, Sister Diane and Sister Anna Marie, joined her, mm -hmm. uh, they moved into St. Vivian's Convent over at St. Vivian's uh, Parish Church and okay. School and stayed there for several years and looked for properties on which to build a monastery and, uh, or actually they were looking for property to move into mm -hmm. uh, an already, uh, a ready-made building and they were having trouble locating something. Mm -hmm. And so uh, one day the friars asked if we would be interested in having part of this property mm -hmm. and the sisters said yes. Yeah. And so the groundbreaking was in 1996 with Archbishop Polarczyk and had our first Mass on May 19th of 1998 with Archbishop Polarczyk. Okay. Yeah, the, the building itself, mm -hmm. uh, um, Bob Doran was our architect. Okay. And what the three foundresses asked him to do was bring a little bit of San Damiano, which is where St. Clair spent 40 mm -hmm. years of her life with her, her poor sisters, the poor ladies, and uh, Bob Doran had visited Italy, and he had been to Assisi, and he had kind of a vision when the sisters started talking, we want to bring San Damiano to Cincinnati. Yeah. And uh, so he was able to incorporate uh, some things that mm -hmm. are in San Damiano, uh, structurally wise, just trying to, to, to bring that feel yeah. of the San Damiano uh, location. The chapel bell comes mm -hmm. from our, um, one of our friars in Hazard, Kentucky brought the chapel bell from oh, there, wow. and so our chapel bell has a history. Yeah. The chapel stalls, most a lot of the wood that you see here yeah. uh, surrounding is actually from the property. Oh, wow. Uh, one of our friars uh, and uh, a benefactor, one mm -hmm. of our benefactors from St. Vivian's Parish uh, did, some, did, did the work, woodworking our benefactor from St. Vivian's built all the choir stalls for us, and our friar uh, sat out in the park, what is now the parking lot, and uh, planed all the wood that oh goes on the goodness. shelves when you see our library in our community room. Yeah. It's lined with books, about yeah. 5,000 books in our library, mm -hmm. and all that wood came from wood. the monastery property here. So, uh, so it, the story mm -hmm. is, um, of how we get here and the people that are involved is so much a part of who we are. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and we're just grateful every day yeah, for, for having such a beautiful piece of property in which to, to live our lives. From the chapel standpoint, we have the San Damiano mm -hmm. Cross uh, that's here at our chapel. And uh, we have our architect, spoke with our foundresses and decided that we wanted to bring the outside in mm -hmm. as Franciscans. And so he designed the monastery with a lot of windows. And so I like when I come into the monastery, it really looks like I'm walking into nature. And during adoration and prayer times, mm -hmm. nature's right with us. We have mm -hmm. a lot of wildlife, deer come uh, one year they came almost every evening for evening prayer oh, wow. and uh, and we're out here just outside the windows mm -hmm. and uh, so it just really uh, keeps us in our Franciscan spirit as mm -hmm. far as nature goes. Yeah. Uh, on the left side of the chapel we have an icon uh, designed and done by Mario Franchi who is an artist from Assisi and one of our friars uh, brought that icon to us so that we could have an icon of, of the Blessed Virgin Mary at the Annunciation. Mm -hmm. The sisters here, our foundresses, then ask Mario Franchi, who was um, uh, still in Assisi, if he would do a, um, an icon of St. Clair. And the sisters provided him with several examples of other icons of St. Mm -hmm. Clair. And so on this other side of the chapel, we have an original design oh, wow. from Mario Franchi, and, uh, and it gives us kind of our icon of St. Clair that, that yeah. we use on a lot, of our, a lot of our materials and a lot of mm -hmm. our letters because it just, um, 
it speaks to us mm -hmm. as who St. Clair was. Then um, we have uh, a courtyard okay. here at the monastery, and we use that uh, for some prayers during our retreat times and things like that. It's beautiful. such a beautiful, mm -hmm. a beautiful space with the fountain. You can hear the water and, uh, and the flowers and everything. We also have uh, paths through our woods. Okay. And in those paths, there's Stations of the Cross. Mm -hmm. And the Stations of the Cross were redone several years ago by an uh, Eagle Scout group. Mm -hmm. uh, a young man had an Eagle Scout project, uh -huh. and he and his troop came and uh, redid the path, uh, helped clean up the stations, mm -hmm. and uh, mulched everything. And it's, it's just a very beautiful project that they did. I'd like to take you around the monastery and give you a closer look mm -hmm. at, uh, at the property and our building. As we go out the ambulatory, mm -hmm. uh, the first door that we reach is the door to the meeting room. And the meeting room downstairs holds up to 35 people. We have a lot of parish groups and um, faith groups who meet in the meeting room on a periodic basis. And we have a panel of windows that actually looks out onto the woods uh, again, so here, just like in the chapel, we're yeah. bringing the outside in, and the next room we come to is our guest area. And our guest area is essentially a two-bedroom, two-bath apartment. Mm -hmm. We're not a retreat house, but we do uh, invite people to come for uh, some time in prayer, either a re directed retreat or a private retreat. And we usually book six months, sometimes a year in advance, uh -huh. especially in the summertime. Yeah. Uh, but that way we can provide an atmosphere for others for mm -hmm. prayer. Then we go continue down the hallway and we come to uh, an icon of Mother Magda Magdalene Bentifolio. And Mother Bengt Bentifolio was our foundress here in the United mm -hmm. States. She came in the 1800s and she was given a letter from Pope Pius IX to come to America mm -hmm. and found a Poor Clare Monastery. And she did. She came with her blood sister Constance and the two of them uh, attempted to s settle in or create monasteries here mm -hmm. in the United States. And Cincinnati is one of the places she was refused back oh. then. <laughs> and we're proud to say that once our monastery in 1990 was founded, that uh, we're the last place that Mother Bentifolio searched out to build a monastery mm -hmm. and was denied, and now we have a monastery in each of those locations. We have a large parlor for uh, meeting visitors mm -hmm. when they come, and we have a small parlor that we use for spiritual direction and spiritual companioning. In the cloister, uh, first we come to our dining room mm -hmm. uh, where we share our meals. Uh, we share, um, as poor Claire's, we have one main meal a day, which is at noon, and we have recreation during that time. And then uh, breakfast and supper are pickup meals, are mm -hmm. smaller, uh, smaller portion meals. And several nights a week, we have quiet suppers. And then um, several nights a week, we watch the news to mm -hmm. keep up with what's going on in the world. And uh, the community room is, is kind of a multi-purpose room, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, we, uh, have recreation in the community room. We uh, pray mm -hmm. some evenings in the community room, and we also consider that our library. We have okay. over 5,000 books in the library. Yeah. A lot of them have been donated, and uh, it provides us with a lot of reading material mm -hmm. and a lot of information for ongoing formation. Believe always that the kitchen is too small, but we we're very fortunate to have a, a, a relatively large kitchen, mm -hmm. and and we're each able to uh, help do housework and community work, yeah. cooking and cleaning and things like that. And uh, one of the main places we're always in is in the kitchen. <laughs> and next we go um, upstairs. Okay. We have an office wing where the business of the monastery takes place, mm -hmm. and within that office wing we have a. Um, classroom. Okay. So sisters who are in formation or sisters who need to get together to go over a project and things mm -hmm. like that will often go to the classroom in order to do that. Also on the upper level is a small prayer room mm -hmm. uh, which we use quite a bit. Uh, 
a lot of sisters, since it's on our bedroom floor, we can come okay. in at night and pray in the small upper prayer room if we'd like. There are stained glass windows, and the stained glass windows were uh, created by one of our friars, and uh, it just creates a beautiful setting mm -hmm. on our on the floor on our third floor, our yeah. bedroom floor, but also uh, a nice setting that we're always walking past that prayer room and we're always walking mm -hmm. past that stained glass window. Uh, some of the bedrooms are here on the courtyard, and uh, when I had a room here on the courtyard, one of the things I loved to listen to was the fountain yeah, uh, during the summer evenings, mm -hmm. and then you would always get uh, awakened by cardinals. Oh. The, the first cardinal yeah. song that comes <laughs> in the morning uh, would come from, uh, from the fountain area. Yeah. Um, after we visit the upper level, mm -hmm. uh, we'll go down to the lower level, and that is where our workroom, uh, we have uh, uh, sewing tables and sewing mm -hmm. machines, uh, and we've done in the past a lot of sewing for the uh, friars, mm -hmm. and we're going to continue some sewing projects, so you'll see the sewing tables there. We also have some computer stations okay. uh, in that workroom. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we actually have a, what we call a computer room where a couple of us have um, computer stations mm -hmm. so that we can do some of the work. We can answer sisters' prayers uh, yeah. on Gmail mm -hmm. uh, and, get, uh, uh, and get information from other people on what mm -hmm. to pray for in the world. Uh, then, uh, of course, we have uh, housework areas. We have yeah. the laundry room, <laughs> and we do have an exercise room mm -hmm. uh, where we can uh, uh, work out a little bit and, mm -hmm. and maintain our health. Yeah. Can you also tell me what a tavola is? Oh, good question. Mm -hmm. A tavola, or docile as some uh -huh. people call them, is a story of a saint's life. Okay. And it usually is uh, depicted in eight scenes, and then there's a center scene. And so we have two tavolas out in our ambulatory area mm -hmm. just outside the chapel. The Tavola of St. Clair is mm -hmm. the one you arrive at first. And it begins with her on Palm Sunday being handed a palm branch from the mm -hmm. bishop uh, and signaling to her mm -hmm. that, uh, what we believe, signaling to her that uh, she can leave and be mm -hmm. the first woman to follow St. Francis. Mm -hmm. So it starts with that and goes all the way to her death. So there are eight scenes that are depicted. Mm -hmm. And her sisters at San Damiano, uh, about 20 years after St. Clair's death, mm -hmm. commissioned the tavola to be made. So the artist and the sisters work together at deciding okay. which events that occurred in St. Clair's life they wanted to pass on to other generations. Mm -hmm. Since in medieval times, no one, not very many people could write mm -hmm. or read, so using pictures was how uh, a person learned about yeah. the saints. And uh, so we're very happy to have that bit of information mm -hmm. from Claire's sisters yeah. to help explain and tell the story of St. Clair. We also have on the other side of the chapel entrance mm -hmm. is a tavla of St. Francis which was done in modern times, I believe it was 1994 when that mm -hmm. was uh, commissioned and done. And it also begins with St. Francis meeting, his, meeting the leper and basically okay. having his conversion mm -hmm. and then goes through uh, uh, ultimately him receiving the stigmata and uh, his death. Thanks for watching another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. Today we are at the Franciscan Monastery of St. Clair. Remember, travel, travel slowly, slowly and, and stop, stop often. often. Bye. Mm -hmm.